Hey, what's up? I'm Rachel Starr, and um, this is my second installment of Ask a Schizophrenic, and these are my questions. So I am answering... Oh, my dog's going to be so annoying. I'm answering the questions that um, were sent to me the past week, uh, quite a few. Uh, so thank you for those who sent in questions. Super cool. Um, not going to call out your names and whatnot, but I'll go through some of the questions, I, uh, all the questions I got. Uh, also, if you'll notice down on the YouTube part of this. Uh, the questions are typed up. So others of you with schizophrenia, bipolar, depression, things like that, if you want, you can answer those questions. Like if you feel like you want to share your info and stuff, you can either put it in the comments below or you can email it to me. And if you email it, I'm not going to be calling you out by name or anything. So I do know, if, keep in mind, if you ask, I mean, if you answer in the questions that, you know, little bit more public. So of course, as always, feel free to email me, rachel at rachelstarlive.com. You don't have to answer all of the questions if you just want to be like, hey, this really helps with my depression or this really helps my hallucinations and you want to share that with other people, then please feel free. And the following week, I will be doing a video with what other people sent in. So yeah. All right, let's go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, do any meds mental illnesses that you know of make you cut your hair short. Uh, medication wise, I don't know. And mental illness wise, I'd say um, there's a, and I don't think I'm saying it right, tr trichomania, trichomania, where you pull, you compulsively pull your hair out. Um, I do think a lot of mental disorders make you want to hurt yourself um, and destroy yourself in ways. Uh, and this is weird because I've often felt like I want to just like cut my hair off and it's not like I want to it's a hair thing it's like I want to um uh I don't know it's like destroying you somehow and I think a lot of um mental disorders make you feel that way like you want to destroy yourself and your brain's going crazy so the only thing you feel like you can do is like want your outer part to match your inner um so kind of weird but yeah as far as medications, I definitely think that different medications like um, psychotic, psych antipsychotics and stuff, um, they affect that kind of stuff in you, so it can easily bring that out, um, bring out desires like that to hurt yourself. And, um, and just think cutting your hair is like not necessarily hurting yourself, but it's destroying that image. Do you, do you ever get voices through the TV? I have never had that. Um, I know that is a very common hallucination is to hear the voices in TV and radio. And I, the only thing I've ever had close to that was it's like I hear there's either a radio like on in the distance and it's like caught between channels. So I can't quite make it out or like really low talking as if someone's left a TV on like in the back of the house, like some, someone's watching TV, except there's no one here. Um, and I hear that a lot and it can be kind of annoying. Um, so, yeah, but I, it's not where I, where I can, like, tell what they're saying, and they don't talk to me. Uh, this person also asked, how would I deal with that? It's all about finding out what works for you. I've told people that, for me, that when I hear the tickings, I hear tickings that just, like, are, like, just in my head and stuff, just gnawing at me. It helps to always have a fan running. Like, I pretty much leave my, like, I have an overhead fan, but I have, like, the little Walmart one that's, like, so it makes noise. And that helps drown it out for me. And I met, just mentioned that in a video, and all these people responded like, no, that makes it worse. And I'm like, okay, I'm sorry, but that's what helps me. I don't know. You just got to see what's going to help your brain with it. Um, you know, and people are like, well, I always say, like, get rid of your TV, okay? If radio, whatever, okay? If, if you're in a situation where it's just something as simple as get rid of it, get rid of it, okay? It, this is about your mental, like, health. Okay, your happiness, meaning getting your head on track and stuff, is way more important than you feeling like you have to have a TV. Well, my friends come up. No, seriously, you come first. So get rid of the freaking TV if that's causing problems. I've had to get rid of so many things because they just caused an issue. Like my brain was hooked up on it. Innocent thing. I can't. Uh, one was a, a DVD cover, and I I can't remember what the movie was, but it just it just I couldn't I couldn't take it. I just had to get rid of it. And um, I do that all the time with things, things that kind of start getting in my head. Just get rid of them. No point in keeping them. Um, how do you fight depression? I, uh, I mean, with people, it's always going to be whatever works for you. But me personally, 
Um, I went through recently a really, really bad depressive, I mean, it was like a really bad, probably two, three weeks that I was just so down, um, to the point that I actually, um, I stayed over at my parents' house a few times and I asked someone to come and stay with me, um, when they were able to, because I didn't trust myself alone. Um. And that's probably the lowest I've been in quite a few years that I had to actually be like, I went over to my, I was just pretty much over at my parents every day um, during the daytime. And then I stayed over there a lot and I um, slept with my mom um, when my dad was out of town. So, I mean, I just like curled up with her because I, I didn't trust myself alone. Um, and same thing with when I asked someone to come and stay with me, um, just, I didn't feel comfortable. Um, you know, when I get off, my brain doesn't think correctly, and I very well could do something bad. And when I was just so, so depressed, do whatever you have to do to make it through those times. Like right now, I'm a thousand times better, okay? And it was just like I slowly came out of it. And my, I'm always like have a depression, but it's not like that bad. Um, so... Do what you have to do. Um, the biggest thing I tell people is when they get in that extremely depressive, suicidal state, get out. Get out of the house. I don't care where you go. Go for a walk. It's 3 a.m. Go for a walk. Who cares? Okay? That That's like break the cycle. Don't just sit there and let those thoughts keep on. Get out of the house. Do something. Um, call up a friend if you got one. But don't sit around in your bed. Or a really bad thing is people just sit on the computer. They go, oh, watch some YouTube videos or something. But no, you get out. Get moving. Get physical. Distract yourself. Um, if you're like Rachel, like, for whatever reason you can't get out of the house, uh, put on a movie. Do something. Uh, grab a book and read it. And I know it can be very torturesome, especially with those of you with hallucinations. And they can be very mean. Um, but... Do something to break that cycle. Get out of that cycle. Take it minute by minute, whatever you have to do. And that's, as far as me dealing with depression, yeah, that, that's what it is. Uh, every day, and sometimes it is minute by minute, you know, just, okay, let's make it to the next thing. Let's make it to the next thing. Um, let's see here. Uh, oh, okay, this was just a, do I take drugs? I don't know if they meant, I, I assume they mean medication. But um, do I take drug drugs, first of all? Um, no, I've never actually taken any drugs. Um, I don't believe in people taking drugs. Uh, I've unfortunately had to be around people that I care about um, who've been on drugs, and I don't like that at all. Um, I think it's sad. I think it's very sad, and it annoys me. And, and I, when, um, when I'm at a party or something and I realize there's people smoking weed, I'm out. I, I will straight up leave. It's nothing to do with it. I just don't want to be around that. And I think... As you get older and stuff, um, I mean, for me, I'm a professional. I'm not going to stand around and, like, you know, watch people. I mean, I could be drug tested at any point, okay? So I don't even want to put myself in a situation of having to breathe it around you, okay? I, I don't want to be around it. I've never used it, have no desire to use it, um, mostly because it alters you. And why, why are you trying to miss out on life? I'm not a big drinker. I, I always say I drink under peer pressure, <laughs> meaning if everyone's having a drink, I will. But no, I don't get drunk or anything. Um, and those of you who are on medications and whatnot, you shouldn't be drinking anyway because it affects your medications. So that's another reason I don't drink. Um, what medications, of course, are you on now? The only thing I currently take is Prozac for depression. Actually, I take fluoroxetine, the, the knockoff version of, flu, flu, of Prozac. Um, and I take, um, I think 60 milligrams a day is what I take. Yeah. So yeah, that's the only, uh, mental drug I'm taking. Um, no, oh, actually no. Uh, I am now on a birth control, which is interesting. And, um, I take it like, like nonstop, like you, anyway, it's weird. They're basically trying to, uh, level out my hormones some and see if that helps. Cause I get like crazy delusional and a lot of like issues around a certain like times of the month. So my girls might understand. I don't want to get too gross into that. But yeah, so, um, I don't know as far as it working. I, I don't know. I've only been doing that for like a month and a half now. So we'll have to, you know, see after a few months if that's really helping my head any to have the hormones kind of leveled out. Um, what has helped you the most? ECT. Um, for me, ECT is what's helped the most. Uh, electroconvulsive therapy, electroshock therapy. 
uh, and tons of different videos about that. Uh, like I said, I just did the uh, playlist. Uh, also, there'll be a link down um, in the YouTube description to that playlist. So I have all those ECT videos and stuff if you want to look more into my views on that. And any of you out there who want to give your views, because I know a lot of people super don't like ECT and have had bad experiences. But for me, it took out a really, the really deep depression and the obsessive compulsive disorders that I had. And that made my schizophrenia significantly easier to manage. Did it make any of that stuff go away? No, but it took away like a lot of the really, really bad stuff. And so what was left was just, I can deal with it a lot better. Um, it's a lot easier to deal with my hallucinations and all that. Uh, I've noticed, Rachel, lately in some of your videos, you look really tired and your weight seems to go up and down. Okay. Yeah, my weight goes up and down. Uh, uh, when I get my goal weight, I guess I'll uh, broach that subject more. But um, yeah, I have lost, I gained weight and then I lost weight. Why? Because my uh, metabolism was slowed down and from all the antipsychotics, they definitely cause you to, you to gain weight. Uh, and it is very hard to control that. Um, yeah. You know, I, as far as me looking tired, I don't mean to look tired. I'll try and be more happy. I don't know. But yeah, it's, yeah. I don't know what you want to say about that, yeah. Do you ever get consumed with things? All the time. All the time. Um, I, I am a perfectionist. I am a, like, I always give 110% at everything I do. Like, I go, like, hardcore all the time. And I can get so sucked into something that I lose track of time and everything else. Um, and I get very, very, the OCD thing kind of really hits in there. And I will become just absolutely consumed with something. And it was funny because um, what happened once was uh, actually... I got it in my head to paint my parents' wraparound porch by hand. So that's what I did all day long on my hands and knees with a paintbrush, painting the wraparound porch until I finished it. Um, and of course the next day I could barely like move. Like it was just like, oh my God, what have I done? Uh, I, it was, and I had to do it. I, I don't know. It was just something I, I had to do. And, uh, yeah, I get like that a lot with my RSL stuff when it comes to editing. I will just kind of become very consumed with it. Uh, luckily, my computer's been dying. So it's kind of funny because it, it, that's one of the things that breaks me out of those cycles is that my computer will just suddenly crash. Because it's like, I can't take any more, Rachel. And it'll just shut down. So it's like it forces me to have to stop. Like, <sighs> so, yeah, I can, I, yeah, I get consumed very easily. And it's once I get in that state, it's very hard for me to break, to break free. <clears throat> do you think that my schizophrenia, the kind I have, uh, makes it harder to take medication because you don't have audio hallucinations? I don't know. Uh, I have no clue on that. Uh, I do have audio hallucinations, but not the voices talking um, and things like that. Um, so I don't know. I, I really have no clue how that affects it. So those of you out there who... Um, have tried different medications. If you can tell us, like maybe, do certain ones make the voices be quieter with you, or certain types, or and same thing with visual. Visually, I can't remember any medication necessarily changing them. Um, no antipsychotic ever really worked on me, so no, none made my hallucinations go away. So I don't, I don't know what to say about that. I really have nothing. Uh, how do you deal with delusions? Uh, real quick, the difference between a hallucination and a delusion. A hallucination is like you're hearing or seeing something or feeling something, um, experiencing something that's not there. A delusion is where you believe something. Um, the most common ones where people think like, you know, they're, they're a savior. They're, um, you know, they know some things everyone else doesn't know. So delusion is like it, you're mentally thinking differently and you're, you're maybe like caught in a world different. What was the question? Oh yeah, how do I deal with them? I do get delusions. Man, oh man, I, I do. And I really, um, I can't, mine I've never been crazy like I'm, I'm the savior of the world or anything. Or there's people following me. I've actually never had anything like that. Um, I'm trying to think of words. Oh, but I guess uh, I'll get confused and think things that aren't real. Oh, perfect example, okay, I'm going to. Uh, so I was like walking in Walmart, Walmart 
and I'm like walking around and I could tell I was starting to get off and I'm sitting there like, Rachel, just act normal. Just act normal. Just act normal. Don't let them see your wings. I don't know why when I start getting delusional, I think I have wings. I have no clue. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I, and I, I, I don't know. I, I, not like I can run and fly, but I guess like if I continue down that path of getting sicker, I could do something retarded like that. I don't know. But, and it's not like look on your back and see you don't have wings. It's like you get these thoughts in your head that are very confusing and you're like, wait, is that real or no? And you get very confused because it's like something you, you totally know is true. It's just like anything else. Like right now, I know I have a dog. Okay. And it, it seems like it like I have wings is on the same level with I have a dog. Like it's just very confusing and to be in that delusional state. And I've talked to a lot of people with family members who kind of get lost in those delusions. And, you know, they're always like, oh, snap out of it. Of course that's not real. It's very real to them. Okay? Just because it seems like stupid if you're on the outside, you're not on the inside. Okay? And to them, it makes perfect sense. So there's no point in arguing. There's no point in telling the person that, you know, oh, well, Rachel, you so don't have wings because it's just the same realization. <laughs> yeah. Um, the second part of that question was, how do you tell when you're delusional? One of my key triggers is that I talk to myself in third person. Um, whenever I start noticing that I'm talking myself through things, I am starting to get what I call off. And um, a lot of the times it's just like, Okay, Rachel, calm down. First, you're gonna do this. Then, you, and I and I talk to myself and I call myself Rachel a lot. And it's almost like, um, I guess I'm splitting um, into personalities. And I've always have told people there's like almost three. And when I'm saying a normal, it's like there's just one. But they kind of start to come apart and talk to each other. And they and then they talk to me like is like I don't know. Like I kind of have to be instructed. It's really weird. Um, but that is a major a major trigger and I have to notice that and pretty much I notice that it means I'm going to be getting worse. Um, I need to get out of whatever the situation I'm in, even if it's something like not bad, but I need to like, if I'm out and about, go sit in your car. If I can get home, go get home, get in bed. And I will pretty much stay in bed. Like I will just lay there in bed. Like I don't need to be up and walking around the house. Um, if it's where I'm really uh, depressed, go to my parents' house, go there, sit, Watch Netflix until somebody comes home. That's just how it is. Um, have you ever taken, and I'm not saying these right, Haddle, 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 Chlorazel, or any psychoactive drug? I don't really, um, I haven't taken any like hardcore, hardcore drugs, any hardcore mental disorder drugs in the past maybe like four years maybe. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I don't know. I don't recall those, but I don't recall most of the stuff I was on. Um, most of that part of my life is quite a bit of a haze, um, which is my next question. Funny. Um, so I don't know. I don't think I took those. They don't ring a bell, but I very well could have. Um, and then you said psychoactive. Um, I don't really know what that is, so I'm going to go with maybe not. Those of you who have tried it, got any um, experiences with those types of drugs, then mental disorder drugs, then uh, yeah, write in, let, let us know, and I'll say your answers. What is your memory loss like? Uh, I do have memory loss from the ECT. It's weird, you know? Um, there's whole chunks gone. Uh, the years right before and right after are gone. I don't really remember anything of college, like none of it. Like it is just a blur. And I had the ECT um, right before my senior year. That's pretty much all, all gone. Um, and my memory in general is really, really bad. And it's kind of like fading. Like for the life of me, I cannot remember my Europe trip this summer. Like I got pictures and video that I took, but mentally I can't like think on it. If I try and like remember something from the trip, I can remember like the picture. That's it. So I kind of have like a fading memory. And it's so funny. I teach modeling and acting classes. And I have been teaching at the same place for six years. And it's always like funny to me because I'll have students come back and I have no recollection of them 
whatsoever. I mean, I had a girl the other night who was like, oh, Rachel, you had me, like, you know, so sad. I'm like, I have no clue who you are. Like, you do not, like, your face is not familiar. Your name is not familiar. And even if I try and think back, like, I'm always changing what I teach, like, to keep it current with um, the industry. And I'm sitting there thinking, I have no clue what I used to teach people. What did I used to teach? I don't know. So I'm going to talk something. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, so, yeah. My memory has always been very clouded, I think, with the uh, schizophrenia. But the ECT definitely took out large chunks. Um, it helped overall. So for me, it's like not that big a deal. I don't it seem like it's in the past anyway. So it's not like I can curl up in my head and relive it all. So it doesn't really bother me. Do you ever feel paranoid since you are paranoid schizophrenic? <laughs> yeah, that's so weird. Um, I guess... I think if I had the audio hallucinations, like the times people think like, oh, there's people following me all the times and people like voices and stuff. I am diagnosed as a paranoid schizophrenic. I think I had it a lot more before the ECT and I was just very on edge and always feeling like things were after me and things were just coming to um, hurt me and stuff just constantly torturing me. But do I, do I feel paranoid? Not really. Um... Not really anymore. I guess, I don't know, it's, it's hard to think what that really means. Um, I think it goes back to the delusional thing. When I get delusional, maybe, I kind of have a paranoidness about me where I think, like, I got to calm down because everyone's going to see. I, my mind starts thinking, everyone's going to think I'm a freak. Um, so, yeah, may, maybe in the terms of when I get delusional, I get, I guess, paranoid-like. Huh. Hmm. Mm. Any of you, and those of you out there with different types of bipolar, different types of schizophrenia, um, there's so many different types. Uh, I always say that uh, schizophrenia is like a um, umbrella word, and then there's lots of little things under the umbrella. That's why I just always say schizo, because there's lots of little umbrella terms and schizoaffective disorder and all different versions. Um, yeah, what was I saying? I don't know. Okay, and... So, so many questions on this. So, so many. So let's just knock it all out at once because you're not going to like my answers. But yes, I got flooded with questions on a topic that I've managed to avoid. Uh, I've always avoided this, but let's talk about it for briefly. How um, is sex with schizophrenia and dating and relationships and blah, 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 blah. You guys, I... I I am a great mo role model in a lot of ways. I, I, seriously, I am. For like adults, I think I'm an awesome role model. Um, but when it comes to <laughs> that stuff, I am not and I don't want to share my experiences and talk about that kind of stuff. Um, if I ever feel like okay with talking about it, then I will. But I don't. So that is my answer to all of that. I'm still going to stay away from it. And those of you uh, who want to talk about it, fine. Um, send me this stuff and I'll be happy to read your answers and your thoughts on the subjects of all that because um, I am not someone that has uh, had a good run with that kind of stuff. Um, and again, if you look at my life, like I said, chunks are missing out of it. Um, I guess I get confused a lot. Uh, you know, just a lot of things have happened to me and I don't really think that my experiences are things that I am currently feel comfortable to share. And I don't think that uh, other, it is really going to help anyone. <laughs> I don't think my experiences is going to make anyone be like, oh, okay. Or I think a lot of times you're like, oh, okay, delusions, you know, I, I can do this. They're not that bad. Whereas this is, this is, this is not inspiring stuff. <laughs> And the biggest thing people always ask me with disorders are, well, do you tell the person you're dating? When do you tell them? Everything's going to be different. Do I think people need to know? Absolutely. Um, you know, the schizophrenia is a major part of me. Um, and, you know, people need to know. I'm not going to be like on a first date, hey, by the way, okay, I'm not going to make a dating profile and be like, and by the way... <laughs> If you message me, guess what? Uh, 
but it is something important and I but it's also a personal decision that whenever you feel ready to tell somebody that you're with that's your own business um, so yeah and that is where we're gonna leave that there was one other thing I meant to hit on crap went in my mind and I was like oh Rachel don't forget and then I went out I should have wrote it down <laughs> sorry playing around here what was it let me look over this real quick I cannot remember at all what it was I remember the minute I hit turn it off. Dang. All right, well, anyway, so uh, those of you who feel like sharing your answers to the questions, questions are typed up down below in the YouTube description. If you're watching us on another platform, I'll try and have it in the description below, but if not, click on and go to YouTube. Um, answer all or some of the questions if you feel comfortable email me rachel at rachel star live if you don't want like your username and stuff if you answer you know in the comments and of course i won't call you out so rachel at rachel star live dot com uh yeah so next week with those answers i am out Also coming up in a few weeks, um, I'm actually going to do a whole week of like in-depth mental health stuff dealing with um, me. So like um, dealing with like how do I deal with anger? How do I deal with like specific hallucinations? Stuff like that. So that's coming up um, in about actually probably like three or four weeks. I'll have that up a whole string of more um, in-depth videos because I just get so like many people asking specifics. Um, yeah. So that'll be coming up. A whole week of that funness. And again, no, I'm not going to talk about sex and dating in that, though. Sorry. <laughs>